Hey guys, just wanted to give a wrap up video for July, um, just to let you know what's been going on in Petal. Uh, I'm recording it in Loom and you can react to it as it go. Ideally, if you have a comment about anything I say, um, please comment and you can even record a comment if you want. Uh, this all helps give me feedback and lets me know if I'm on the right track for certain things. First thing to talk about is ElixirConf. So I'm going to be speaking about building a Hex um, component library. Uh, yeah, it's my first time speaking at one of these kind of things. So let's see how I go. Uh, some new components I've been working on and I can give a quick demo. So if you go up to dev, uh, you'll now see a sort of overview of your app you know, as you build it, this takes in a router and will spit out all this stuff. So it sort of separates your app into sections based on the first um, keyword in your path. So app kind of represents, you know, your logged in state. And this is arbitrary, you can, you don't have to do this. Um, maybe if your app is very org based, you know, you have a company that logs in and might be just org uh, then you've got your auth routes so I've now scoped everything related to auth you know in this auth path so it's now sort of one section you know unsubscribe the emails admin and dev so you can sort of build out sections like this I do want to improve it so it's more granular in that because apps probably going to have the most routes by far when you keep building a bigger app and so you probably want to split, you know, inside of app different sections. So I'll probably make it like a tree view or something. Uh, the other component is a data table. And if we go to admin, and so it defaults, this is the users of your app. So this is using the data table. Uh, basically, I wanted to make it a table that, you, that didn't that meant you didn't have to code, you know, sorting, filtering, um, and pagination. You know, like let's go to 10, 10 rows and then you can see it all works. So that's just all updating the path in the URL. And <coughs> that comes down into the, the live view and then uh, filters the query. So this, this helps a lot with sort of admin dashboards and when you quickly want to just see, you know, a table structure and, you know, and you can configure all like the headers and which bits you want sortable and which you want filterable. Uh, I've got like a, like this is kind of representing a Boolean. You, none of them are checked at the moment, but if I like suspend the user, oh, my checked. <laughs> Checkboxes seem to be not working right now, but usually there's a tick there. And you can filter by it like that. And I do want to make another, this is like a Boolean related filter and eventually I want to have like, like a select, you know, so say you have a bunch of options, maybe you can select or, che you know, have checkboxes to select the ones you want visible. But anyway, that's still a work in progress, but it's, it's come far enough now that it's quite useful. Um, I've streamlined the router, so this is like a mini map view. You can see this is the old router and the new one. Uh, the old one was a bit bloated. Um, this is it here, the old one. Uh, it's, I mean, I just don't want it to be overwhelming for new um, users of this framework. I just, I want it to be simpler so you can easily get a grasp this is the new one you get a grasp of the app and where you eat where you can like add new routes and you don't feel bad about breaking anything like so this is just like scope app and this is where you put all your sort of authenticated routes and i've hidden away the, the routes that you don't really change much auth so you know you can click in there and these are where they're they're put just kind of like in the pedal pro web routes so you got admin auth dev mailbuster so you can 
you can split your ads up into like sections like this uh, if you like. Um, next we have improved quality standards. So coveralls, credo and so below, they're all uh, Elixir libraries that help you um, maintain a coding standard or you know it, it checks for like so coveralls checks if your um, how much of your code is tested and it spits out a report so I'll can quickly run it now so this is sort of given me so this is like consistency problems so I've still got some consistency problems I need to fix apparently um, but they're not too bad sometimes it'll, it'll spit out like error like like really bad things are done or refactoring opportunities so it's quite useful um, coveralls is what I explained before I've gone in the wrong order haven't I coveralls is the so it runs your tests and then these are all your files it sort of has looked at and tells you how much you've covered it with the tests. So it shows you every file and so my total coverage is 47. I, I don't know what's good, but that's probably could be improved. And so below, yeah, I run it with this config, which is in the root directory here. I did that because I wanted to ignore a couple of files, but basically, so below will just check for common like security problems to help you keep your app secure, um, and you can run them all at once with mixed quality if you want. So you could do that before you push to a new branch or something. Uh, content security policy. So sometimes, so so that mixed so below command I just showed pointed out that Phoenix doesn't set a content security policy for you and you probably should just to help protect against you know xss attacks like cross cross site scripting so here's an example so let's imagine we have a content security policy of default source um, example.com so when your site requests you know a, a javascript file from example.com or css file from example.com they pass because you know it's sort of whitelisted but any other request for some other javascript or any other thing asset fails so it's kind of like a whitelisting um, ability and i've added this in so let's just close some of this and if you look at back at the router at the top so this put secure browser header headers was already in there it comes with phoenix but it doesn't set the content security policy so you can actually add another an argument to this which just adds more headers and so i've added a header called content security policy and i've used this library um, to build it and it basically builds it from um, I've made it so you set it in your config. So if you go config, uh, you can see it here. And I've given some resources you can just check up, you know, what you can turn on and off and all that. But as a def just to keep it simple, all you need to do is uh, add any uh, like CDNs or things you load scripts from here. Like this is like your whitelisting place. And you can look up this other stuff. We have to do unsafe eval for Alpine JS, which is annoying. Um, so I'm, I'm eventually going to remove Alpine um, because of this, and then hopefully we can remove these unsafe inline, unsafe eval because uh, <laughs> it's all in the name. I think they're unsafe. Um, next, we have some new JS hook helpers. Um, so with hooks, sometimes it's annoying that you might, you know, you have some dead views, some live views, and you want the hook to work in both. So I made it so dead views um, can run hooks basically. And how that works is in yeah, my app 
JS file, I've got this on doc ready. So when the document's loaded, it basically finds all the hooks on the page and just runs the, the mount function. So this only works for like simple hooks, which only have, you know, which don't communicate with a live view. So for example, the color scheme changer, um, which is this thing. So when it's mounted, uh, I just run this dot init and that will just add a listener, like a click listener. And that's all it does. So it's very simple. So for simple ones like this, you can just put dead view compatible true. And then, so that'll run. So it's runs on the, like this, the page I'm in now is a live view, but like the, the landing page is a dead view and that still works. So it's just a, helps it with that. Next thing we've got is dynamically load external libraries in a hook. So because we don't use the node build system, we don't have a package JS file and node modules because I want to avoid that. Like it's just like annoying. So, but then you've got the question, well, what if you have lots of, you know, external libraries, you know, that you want to use. And so I've made it so you can easily load them um, on the fly. So if you have a hook that, um, this is an example, like the tooltip hook, which will, is now in, in Petal Pro. Uh, you, you import this load external file um, script that I wrote. And basically you just run, you just run it and you pass an array of uh, either CSS files or JavaScript files that you want. And then um, run and do whatever you want with it. And this is made to uh, only load the files once, so it'll cache it, and you can run, you know, have this hook a hundred times on your page, and it'll only ever load these files once. So it's kind of like its own. It's just it's kind of like that Skypack library, but made to sort of run in hooks. And I don't know. It seems to run fine. Let let me know in a comment if you can see anything wrong with this or if there's a better way but it seems to work well for me uh, next we've got a oban jobs table so oban as you know has a pro version and allows you to get a web view of all of the jobs so i'm just made i've just made a simple version of that um, if you don't want to pay for oban and you can you know you can retry a job if the state is retriable and you can cancel it and um, you can see all the errors here so it's a that's still sort of work in progress as well I haven't used that in production but um, it'll be nice to just sort of see the jobs uh, roadmap updates so you know on our site we got you know pedal.build slash roadmap I'm sort of just showing what's happening there so that seems like most people want a JSON API. That's the most upvoted one. Uh, also a video series, which I do want to get to um, once you know I've done Stripe and I feel very secure with Petal. Uh, API using Ash framework. This is, Ash is sort of coming up now to a version 1.0 um, and I've heard good things about it. Oh, sorry, 2.0, but it's kind of like a 1.0 and this could be useful in A, generating an API, and B, just like the, the way they've built it, um, can it can make it easy to build like admin dashboards and lots of, it does a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So I do want to look into that. Make sidebar collapsible and more, yeah, video series. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'll do more videos. Uh, one person suggested this ad support for Reven functionality which Raven is like paddle but built on top of elixir acting as a merchant record pitched as a simple global tax compliance shield so it's kind of like because we use paddle to help deal with tax in different jurisdictions and we'd like to use stripe and Raven apparently allows you to keep using stripe and they will handle your taxes so if anyone's used this um, can you please <laughs> comment and let me know if it's actually legit because that would be great to move back to Stripe because Paddle is not quite as good in terms of a de the developer experience. 
Uh, strive progress, yeah, so there's, it's delayed again, I guess, while I keep building these other things because I was, I was working on strife and I kept finding little niggles that I wanted to fix and, you know, like clean up the router and have these hooks helpers and all that. So that's still coming along. Um, I mean, I've, so far I've, I've been building out a lot of files related to stripe and I want to get it at a, a level where it's sort of easy to pick up and easy to extend but doesn't fully bloat the application and make it you know, annoying to remove and all that. And yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next month.